Hello everyone, my name is Linda Dolkey. It is Sunday night and we are going to do some Sunday night crafting. I hope you're all well and I hope you've had a wonderful, wonderful weekend wherever you might be. I'm just looking here at the comments. I'm a tiny bit late and I do apologize, like I'm two minutes. I actually um, thought I had more time and I was sitting here at my desk just planning and thinking about what I was going to do tonight and I suddenly looked at the clock and it was 7.29. I'm like, quick. <laughs> so yeah. I hope uh, I need an alarm, don't I? That really is what I should set myself a timer. Never mind. <laughs> All rearing to go, Cherie. We missed you on Friday night. I don't think you were around on Friday night. Hey, Suzanne. Hi, Margaret. Hello, hello. Hi, Donna. Oh, Donna was here first tonight. That's a bit unusual. It's it's dueling, dueling um, Donna and Margaret. Because sometimes it's Margaret that's first. Usually it's Margaret that's first. And tonight, Donna beat you to the pip. Uh, Nicole, hi. How are you? Janine, all people in different states. And when I say states, I mean different states of Australia. I don't mean different states of, you know, mental health. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so how's everyone? I would love to hear if anyone did anything fun and exciting this weekend. If you did, please post it in the comments so we can say woohoo, well done you. Did anyone get time to craft over the weekend? I did a tiny, tiny bit, but not very much. I've been pretty busy this weekend, actually. I'm uh, I'm still going with my walking. I've been walking every day um, since I started on the 2nd of January. So I missed the first day of January and then I missed one other day in January. And apart from that, I've walked every single day. So I am trying to keep up that habit. Um, and it is becoming a habit now. I get up and think, okay, get my walking shoes on. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, I'm kind of getting up and preparing for it. And I actually get sort of set up the night before. So that was working well for me. I just want to get walking and more get to move more because at my age I shouldn't be sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> How is everybody else? How are you guys all doing? Oh, it's humid up there in Queensland, I can imagine. Yeah, it's been a little it's been a bit humid down here too, but not crazy bad. Not like it is up there, Suzanne. I don't know how you do it. I when I was younger, I loved to the love the hot weather and the humidity didn't bother me at all. And the older I get, the more it bothers me. <laughs> 28 in Brisbane. That's not too bad, Janine. That's pretty good. What is it here right now? I actually don't even know. I didn't look at my clock before. I didn't look at my, my uh, weather app before I started, so I don't know. But I think it got up to about 34 or 35 today, thereabouts, something like that. So not crazy bad, but, you know, looking through all the comments, I see lots and lots of people. I am so, oh, there you go. So Leslie said it was 38. That would be Sydney, right, Leslie? 38 in Sydney down to 35. And it's actually a couple of degrees hotter down there than it is here, surprisingly. But, yeah, I guess we're closer to the coast. That's probably what it is. <laughs> hey, Denise, nice to see you. I was thinking about you. We must have a coffee soon, seeing as you're a lady of leisure now. <laughs> but that's a funny joke. Oh, I've got a cat under my feet. Hello, Merlo. What you doing there? He's just rubbing him. He was under my desk. I uh, must be making too much noise for him. You are working. Well, you're allowed to work. That's okay. And you don't have to be sorry. I was just making a note. We did notice your absence. You were conspicuous by your absence. <laughs> Cherie. And I see we have lots and lots of people. Katrina, Nairi, Glenda. Oh, everybody's here. So I am so sorry that I haven't uh, said hello to everybody individually. Hi, Deb. Nice to see you there. Um, so I'm very sorry if I've missed your name, um, but hopefully I'll get to your comments as we go through. Margaret was the first in the comments today, Donna. Aha, uh -huh, that is right. <sighs> Thank you. Thanks, Deb. Ah, oh, you've got all packed up and ready for your craft class tomorrow, Nari. That's awesome. Yes. I, oh, open home. Are you moving? Are you selling? Ooh didn't know about that that's I hope to never have to move house ever again because it's horrible <laughs> I hate moving mind you we do did do a little bit of decluttering around here this weekend and our bedroom looks the nicest it's looked in a really long time so I'm very happy about that uh, Joan I see you there ah yes I need to move more but hate the heat that's why I go early in the morning so I get up early when I say early 
um, not that early, probably walking, I've been walking about 7am. So that seems to be, it's not too early. And, you know, I, in the past, I used to walk at six. So, um, but I haven't been, I've been going to bed a bit late. So I've been walking about seven. So that seems to be working. So before the sun really hits and before it gets really hot, so it's good. <laughs> uh, 14 in Hobart. Are you serious, Sally? Oh my goodness. That's really, really cool. It sounds lovely actually right now. Oh, well, Jamie did something exciting this weekend. She made two banana cakes to use up six ripe bananas. Fantastic. <laughs> do cats eat bananas? Do cats eat bananas? Let alone banana cake. Do they eat bananas? I don't think I knew that. We tried to feed Merlot some mango this morning. We looked up to make sure that, um, that um, it wasn't toxic, and it's not. Um, but he wasn't interested. <laughs> ah, and Lani said she's walking too and scrapbooking. Yes, organising photos is such a big job, isn't it? I've got so many photos, I don't even know where to start, to be honest. Yes, looking for a cool spot, absolutely. <laughs> all right, I'm just going through. I think I've got all the comments now. If I have missed any questions or anything I should have commented on, my apologies to you. But what I might do is head over to the desk and get started. Here we go. Uh, click the right button. All right, so it's my little reminder to myself to tell you that it is celebration right now. And every time you spend $90 here in Australia, you can pick something for free out of this catalogue. And there's some really cool things. There's stamp sets and dies and there is beautiful papers. Uh, what else do we have? This is another stamp set here. So when you spend $90, you can choose any of the level one gifts. This beautiful foil paper is a level one gift. Then we've got some uh, little dots, opaque faceted gems, they're called. Um, the softly stippled DSP that matches the uh, stippled roses bundle. Um, the flight canary paper that I am planning on getting to use tonight. So hold, hold on for that if I have got something in my head. Um, and then we also have in here... The Sunny Days paper, which I don't have yet, but that's probably the next thing I want to get. And the Watercolour Melon, which I do have and haven't done very much with yet. So I really need to get that out and play with it. Maybe we should, maybe I should do that next weekend. We'll see. All right. So I am going to be doing something out of here. Okay. Cats eat anything? Uh, Merlot will eat almost anything, but he didn't seem to be very excited about the mango. He, and both both he and Crumpet sniff, uh, sniffed at it and went, nah, yeah, nah, I'm not having that. <laughs> oh, yeah, our cat's uh, Merlot loves chips, like as in crisps, out of a, out of a packet. He loves them. Oh, my goodness. And the, his favourite by far are the honey soy chicken, honey soy chicken chips. Loves, loves, loves those. So... You saw someone make a dog out of the watermelon stamps. That's a cool idea. I must go looking for that, Cherie. What a cool thing. I would never have thought of that. I don't always think of those kind of things. Yes, the new online exclusives are fantastic, Leslie. Has everyone who's a demonstrator seen them? You can go onto your demonstrator website and check them out right now. They are absolutely fantastic. I'm very, very excited. And next month is when all of the customers, all of you ladies who like to purchase, you guys get to see them and uh, play with them next month. But as soon as I have some arrive, I'll start showing them off. I haven't placed my first order yet. I'm just waiting to get paid. And then I will place an order for some of those online exclusives. I can tell you already, the coffee set is to die for. Love, love, love. Okay. And then I also love the, there's a pets set that's got two cats and a bird. Yes, it does have a dog and other things in it, but um, it has two cats and a bird in it. Oh, my goodness. It's like it was made for me. Very exciting. And one of the cats look up, looks like it's black and white and the other one looks like a tabby. So it really could be my boys. Very excited about that. The other thing that is coming in there, there's a beautiful new magnolia set. I'm, I love a good magnolia set. I think magnolias are the most magnificent flowers and there's gorgeous dyes to go with those. There's some beautiful, beautiful things. So these are all coming out as online exclusives. What is the purpose of online exclusives? It's when we only have three catalogues come out a year, okay, which means sometimes there's quite a gap between new things coming out. So Stampin' Up! is releasing online exclusives in the in-between months. So two months after a new catalogue goes live, then they have online exclusives come out 
and then we have a catalogue and then two months after that we have another lot of online exclusives and so on. So that every two months there's something for you guys to get excited about. I love the Magnolia Bundle too, Leslie. I think it looks fantastic. So you're saying if you look at the cover, so this is Cherie giving me some help now on the, oh, this is the water. So this one here, is this what you're talking about? Uh, the rind is the mouth. Yes, I can see it would be a smiley mouth. Oh, this one, the one that goes all the round or just the one that's like a less of a curve. Ah, oh, I know. There is some Celebration second release things and Cherie just mentioned that all the markers for all the new colours that were released, not the in colours but all the other new colours like Bubble Bath, Lemon Lolly, um, those kind of colours, Pecan Pie, those ones there is a set of markers that meet, that fits all of those new and they are a level two free celebration item so that's really cool because um yes i think everyone has seen well not everyone has seen the new celebration items but they are fantastic so what i will do if you are in my vip group my um private stamping group let me just put that address up on the screen for you it's this one okay linda dolky's private stamping vip group that's a Facebook group that I run for all my Australian followers. And if you're a customer of mine, you definitely need to be in that group, okay? The reason being that I announce things in there when they're new. I put up the host code. I do various things for people who are in that group. Um, and I will put tonight or tomorrow, hopefully tonight if I remember, um, I will put all the new celebration items that you can choose from in that group so you can see them, okay? So... If anyone is not in that group and you're in Australia, head over to that one. You would go on Facebook, Linda Dolphy's Private Stamp and VIP group, and request to join, okay? There's a couple of questions to answer, like if you're in Australia, if you're a customer or would like to be. Um, and if you want to, you can also enter your um, email address and I'll add you to my, um, my newsletter list. My newsletter comes out usually once a week, okay? So um, that's what that's all about. I will hide that and get rid of that off the screen. All right, um, I think I missed all the rest of the comments. I'll have to work out how the how the um, how do you know how long the line how long they buy? Do you mean as a demonstrator or as a customer? That's a bit of a double barrel question, Donna. It says how do you know how long the online exclusives you buy last? Do you mean how long they're going to be online? Is that what you mean? Because they're basically there until they sell out. So I don't know if that answers your question top right so i can see you could make a face with this for certain definitely and this could be an ear that's super that's super cute <laughs> ah there we go let's have a look here <laughs> all right okay i will come back to the puppy dog made out of the watermelon I think that sounds like a really cool idea. But tonight we're going to do something else. And I'm going to I'm going to use a set tonight that everyone has probably been waiting for me to use because it's like it was the first thing I bought out of this catalogue. And what page is it on? It is on page 20. And anyone who saw this set would not have been surprised that I bought it because it's kind of a me set. It's a set that here it is. This is the Hills of Tuscany stamp set which has all these beautiful kind of watercolour images in it. Really, really pretty, gorgeous, gorgeous set. Um, you can do lots of lots of fun things, but it's great for creating scenes. And you guys know I love to create a scene, right? I know. Leslie's just mentioned that the eclectic, it's called Delightfully Eclectic, I think. Um, and that is DSP. That is a double DSP pack. It actually sells for $53, and so it's got 48 sheets in it. Really, really, it's not really a double pack, but it's that quadruple pack because normally we have 12 sheets in a pack, and this one has 48, um, and it is 12 by 12 paper. So it, that is fantastic. It sells for $53, and it is one of the free celebration items. So, yep, definitely if you have been wanting those things, you want to head over there and have a look at that. All right, so. This is the set I thought I would play tonight and I'm going to use um, one of my favourite little things, a little bit of a trick um, to get some scene building going. I'm going to be using watercolour paper um, and like I said, this is 
one of my favourite things to do. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I'm not even 100% sure what I'm doing tonight with this. But um, this is this watercolour paper. It's called Fluid 100, okay? It's an excellent um, thick, like heavy weight watercolour paper with what they would, what you would call a low tooth. Okay, that sounds technical, doesn't it? So the tooth on watercolour paper or any paper actually refers to the amount of texture that you have in the watercolour paper. So, Jamie, this goes back to our, goes back to our um, Certificate of Fine Arts days doesn't it <laughs> um so it's got a very low tooth okay it's pretty smooth you can sort of let me hold it so you can see the texture okay now if you go and buy uh, watercolor paper in the shops such as maybe a canson watercolor paper in per, up in my opinion canson watercolor paper is kind of like the best out there um and it you can buy them in different types of tooth okay so you can have some that are very textured have a lot of tooth or some that have a lesser tooth are more smooth Okay, so if you think about the tooth as the amount of texture that it has, that's kind of, I know, 94 and 95, I know, I know, so so long ago, right? <laughs> the only person who watches my videos who's been, um, who I've been in touch with longer than you, Jamie, is, is Bronwyn. I don't know if Bronwyn's watching tonight. She watches sometimes, but Bronwyn's over in South Australia. And I went out with her brother when I was 19. So I have no Brahmin since then. So that was um, like mid to mid eighties, <laughs> mid eighties. Oh my goodness! So um, yeah, so that's a long time. I've known her the very longest of anyone, but I think you're next, Jamie. So there you go. All right. So this paper is five inches by seven inches in in uh, width and length, um, and it, it actually should say that somewhere on the back here five inches by seven inches, which if you're interested in that in metric, that's 12.7 centimetres by 17.8, okay? So if you need the measurements, it's 5.7 inches, or so five by seven or 12.7 by 17.8, okay? So that's your measurements of your paper. Now that's too big for the front of a card. I usually find if I want to work with this, I can cut it exactly in half. So given that this is the seven inch long bit, if I put that in at three and a half, that's going to be exactly the halfway mark, okay? And that then becomes quite a good size to work with on a card. So if I was to grab a card base, for example, like so, you can see it fits really very nicely on there, okay, with a bit of a, with a, bit of a border all the way around. So that's a really good size if you cut it in half for that that's for a metric card base all right so i'm deciding whether to go portrait or landscape i'm actually thinking maybe i'll go portrait but let me let me show you my inspiration tonight all right so this is a technique that i'm just going to turn that oh sorry let me try and get this right i want to get a little bit of that um glare off well, what i can do is just pop a piece of paper there and that will get rid of the glare let's do that <laughs> and then I want to straighten up again because I hate it being crooked. All right, so we've got the Hills of Tuscany. If anyone's wondering, the Hills of Tuscany set is $42 here in Australia, okay, and it has 16 photopolymer stamps, okay. They are really, really pretty. And I have gone to Pinterest and I have printed out something like an inspiration picture. Now, you don't have to do this, okay. Hey there, Jolene, okay. Okay. Um, but I just thought these, I really like the colours that somebody has painted this scene. This is not done with the stamp set. This is an actual scene. But it, you can see that we could create something like that, right? So I'm sort of excited to play around with that and go with those colours and see what we can come up with. So let's let's uh, look at my colour palette here. I'm going to need some, I think I'm going to need some light yellow and some crushed curry for my sunset background. So here's some lemon lolly and oh, will I go? Yeah, I'll go crush curry. Crush curry is a little bit, it's actually not quite as dark as what it is here on the ink pad, but I'll have a little play with that. That might work quite well. And then we're sort of going into some more pinky sal salmon-y colours here. So maybe some floaty flamingo might work really well if we're going to create a sunset background, okay? I'm not sure about the, that looks like azure afternoon. 
So we could play with that if we want to. You can see that's pretty close to that. But I haven't decided if I want to add that yet. Um, as far as the greens, gosh, this green looks like evening evergreen. Was that, That's a retired colour, so I can't use that. So what will I use instead? Maybe I'll just go for a little mossy meadow, even though it's a little bit more, it's got a touch more yellow into it, but still I think that could work. And there's definitely some blue tones through here as well. So either Misty Moonlight or Night of Navy could go in there as well. So, all right, I've pulled a few colours out now and I'm going to have a little bit of a play and see what we can come up with. Normally when I do a scene like this, will I go landscape or will I go portrait? If I go portrait, it's going to look like, like this, which would be quite nice. If I go landscape, we have to go wider. I don't know. Maybe. I think they both look nice. Maybe just for fun, we'll go portrait and see how it looks. Yeah, thank you. Well, it's it's a beautiful example. Let's see if we can duplicate it or come up with something. Now, ours is not going to look the same. Okay, I'm not trying to create it to be the same. I'm trying. Oh, everyone's saying landscape. Okay, landscape it is. All right, you girls. All right, so I'm going to start putting some of these on. I definitely want to use this one because that's sort of a, a hill in the foreground there. I think really the hills of Tuscany, this is the hill, right? Because, <laughs> and you can see on the back here, we, uh, we can actually use, and I may use the back of the stamp to get a, uh, a hill that faces the other way. But I'm going to start with this one that's actually got a little bit of texture on it because this has actually got the right kind of, so I'm going to put it face down and I'm going to pull out my stamp, my block. This is block H and I'm going to pick that up and it's ready to go. What else are we going to need, do you think? And I'm thinking for the hills we might go with the blue and then add our trees in the green. But I could actually add some, some green over the top if I decide to. Hmm. Okay, let's see. What else do we have? I've got... This one here that would be nice for the foreground and I'm going to pop that on a block as well. And I don't actually have a lot of um, long skinny stamps so I'll use the same size block. And what else? This big one for the sky because I really like this. I think this would be nice on block E because you need a big block for this one. So let's whack that one on there. And let's see, um, we're definitely going to want to add some, some trees. So let me add those onto a block B, so a little block. And we could add, I don't have to, but we could add the house. All right, now the house, if we're going to add the house, like we will be working with a lot of this um, wet and I'll show you why in a minute. We, hmm, I might do a couple of different versions. We'll see. You can work with it wet and have the whole thing like a watercolour wet look. Um, or you can have, you can start with it dry and then add water. So I might do the first one starting with it dry. But when we add the house, the house has to be more detailed. Like the landscape can be kind of blurry and watercolory, but the house needs more detail. So we need need this to be dry when we add the house so at that point I will probably use my um, my heat tool to make sure it's dry we'll see okay so what else would I like here oh we've got some more we've got some more trees I love the trees the trees are great let's add them to block C and hmm there's also little dots and things and I might add some of those later. We'll see. All right, let's start with what we have. Oh, there's also this one. This one here. I might add this. This is a good, like, background, a background hill, this one. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting it up. But you don't have to have use all these if you don't want to. You can use whichever ones you like um, and play around with it. So we're going for this kind of a look, but don't expect it to look exactly like this. Okay. Well, what we're hoping, Cheryl, is if they don't sell, if they don't um, have all of these um, sell out with the joining special this month. So if you're joining new as a demonstrator, I think most people, because Cheryl's just mentioning that she likes the glass mat. Um, can you stamp on them without a mat? Yes, but if it's a big, um, 
if it's a big solid stamp, I still like to use a piercing mat because you can, I showed this in a video uh, the other day, um, you can still miss some of the middle of a very large stamp. I did it with the Enduring Beauty stamp and I missed a little bit in the middle, even though even though I was using the glass mat. So just bear that in mind. So yes, it's a great stamping surface. I love it and I do lots of different things with it. But um, my suggestion would be that you, um, you do still use a piercing pad for very large or very solid stamps. All right, I'm going to start, I think, with Misty Moonlight. Decided that's the first colour I want to bring in. Oh, what did I just do? Here it is. I put it, moved it out of the way. I kind of want to keep this close by as a reference. Okay, so I'm going to start with this here. I'm going to use Misty Moonlight and a bit of green. All right, so I'm kind of starting with this here. And you can see how this stamp, these stamps are fantastic. See how some is darker and some is light? That is the way they ink up. Isn't that fantastic? So you it, you immediately get texture to your stamp, even though you've just stamped it all in one colour. It's the way it picks up the ink. Love that. All right, so I'm actually going to come here with my Mossy Meadow and let me grab, I've got some more sponge daubers coming at the moment, but I'm going to grab a green one and I'm going to add some green ink along the top so it's mixed sort of with the with the um what do you call that the uh, misty moonlight all right so let's start just below halfway and i'm going on to a dry piece all right so it's dry so can you see i've got some green along the top and we've got we've got um navy towards the bottom all right looks good like that looks great actually all right so i would really like to have um another piece coming down like a hill coming down from in the opposite direction can you see how we've got one going this way and then we've got something here and then we've got one coming down this way the other way so what i'm going to do and this is going to give me a slightly different effect is i'm going to turn that over on the block and i'm going to i'm going to have it sticking that won't stick as well because it's um, let me just, actually, I'm going to clean it first to help it stick better. It won't stick as well because um, the side, the smoother side always will stick better. All right, so let me try and get this to stick better. If worse comes to worse and you really can't get it to stick, then um, you can use a bit of seal to stick it on well and truly. All right, so will I go with the green or will I? All right, I'm thinking maybe I will actually have it more green over in oh i don't know oh, i don't know i'm doing both both colors and i'm going to stamp this off i'm just going to grab a scrap give me one second while i grab a scrap just a scrap of paper here All right see how dark that is i don't want it dark that dark and the other thing i don't want to do <laughs> I'm going to use a piece of scrap here. I would like this to go down behind here. So I'm going to actually put this, this bit of paper here and I'm going to mask that off. And I'm just going to stamp that over. So now this one looks like it's disappearing behind here. Okay. And we did that by not having it go over the top. So it's really easy to do, but it looks it looks clever. <laughs> if that makes sense all right now i've got this little little bit here i would like that to be misty moonlight or okay let me try let me try misty moonlight first and then i might see whether we want to do that or whether we want to add some navy in all right that's a good start all right so i'm happy with this the beginnings of this and i'm just going to Ah, oh, hey, Monique, no problems at all. You, you have trouble? You know what? Um, I have done a couple with this, but I haven't played with it nearly as much as I meant to. Um, I have got here some water painters, and let me just grab one here. And what I'm going to do is I like to have a bit of scrap paper by my side, and normally I also like to have um, some paper towels, which I forgot to bring in, but oh well. And I'm actually going to take to this with my water painter, and I'm going to kind of start to blend all these together 
so it's going to make it have a much darker quality to it and some of these colors some of these and I'm going to bring it down a bit further as well some of these colors moss, mossy meadow um night of navy um misty moonlight a little bit less but some of these colors um, work really really well with water like some work better than others and I'm going to bring this one down as well a bit more water and then we've got a bit of this and I'm actually thinking I might add some more misty moonlight over the top of this so the hills are alive with the sound of music I have a um a team member who <laughs> absolutely hates with a passion the sound of music I'm not sure she did tell me why once and I can't remember but she hates it oh my goodness she hates it so I'm going to come in over the top of this again because I want to have this quite dark and maybe you can see it's spreading really really well some colors spread better than others I'm just going to bring that down Now, if I decide I want to add more colour down the front here, I will. Um, but I'm going to start next with, oh, let me see. In the stamp set, do we have, let's see. Oh, we do have a sun. All right, so we have a sun here. I'm going to use that one, I think. All right, so I want to use my big stamp, the one that we had here, and I'm deciding what colour will we do this in. I'm thinking maybe the flirty flamingo, which I know is a bit of a weird choice but i'm thinking that's kind of this kind of bit around the very middle is going to be yellows but i'm thinking more pinks around the edges so let me start with that i'll be adding detail like trees and possibly houses later but i'm sort of doing all the background work right now so this is a really quick and easy way if you have not done a lot of watercoloring and you're not sure where to start stamping is a great way to get into watercoloring um, the other day on Tuesday we did watercolour pencils and that's also another. Now I would like this to be, I'd like this to be quite watery, the sky. So let me have a little look here. I'm going to get myself, I've got a water painter and I'm actually going to spritz this a little bit because I want it to be a bit damp when I start, when I come in and stamp it. All right, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add this. Let's see what we can do. Oh, it's picked up some some of the other colour, some grey and so forth. Let me use a different one. So that sort of didn't go quite the way I wanted, but that's okay. Well, maybe it's a stormy sky. All right, so it's got some pink going on in there. And then I'm thinking... Then I'm thinking we will play with our crushed curry now. I'm wondering, I'm going to do that again. It's starting to dry a little bit. So I think, I don't know how Flirty Flamingo goes as a, I want to add a bit more colour out on the outside here. <laughs> I'm just putting it wherever because I want, oh, wrong one. Where is it? Here it is. So I want to have some of that colour more on the outside. All right. So I've got crushed curry here and I'm going to grab a blending brush. I might start actually with lemon lolly because we can always work up, but it's hard to go the other way. I'm just going to add a bit of yellow in the center here with my blending brush. And we haven't added things like trees and stuff like that yet either. So this is lemon lolly I'm adding. And then I'm thinking about going up to crush curry more on the outside of that. Okay, 
brush curry here we go let's see what we can do i want to have kind of like a, having that go outside that that bit so it's starting to all come together like a sunset if that makes sense and it's kind of you want it to not look flat so i could still come in here with my as your afternoon but i don't know if i want to i don't know i think that might be too much too much blue the wrong too many different blues all right so with my lighter lemon lolly here or should i go with crushed curry i'm thinking i will add the sun here and so that's this can go on with a book I think a block is in my bag from when I had a class on last week. But if not, if I can't find it, then we'll have this one instead. All right, shall we go with the darker or the light? Oh, Suzanne, I love watercolour paper. I just think it's a fabulous thing. I'm actually going to go with the crush curry. I've decided to go darker. And then we're just going to kind of zoom around and get that kind of something going on in the sky there so it looks like a sunset. Is it kind of looking like a sunset? I'm now thinking I want the outside of this to be, it's not looking like the stamp at all, does it? But I'm thinking I'm just going to come in and do the sky. I'm just using my blending brush in the Flirty Flamingo. So kind of look like a sunset what do you think so this is what we kind of this is the inspiration <laughs> and this is how we've ended up it's quite different but that's okay i did say it wouldn't be the same so all good all right so now we have got all of this going on this is actually getting pretty dry so i may not need to hit it with the heat tool and i'm deciding whether i want to have something else going on in the foreground here or whether i stamp a sentiment there now let me see um grab a I'm just looking to grab a card base. I might have to actually get up and... Oh, no, here's one. found one. I thought I had one here. All right, so I'm just going to fold this over. Now, this is white, of course. I could pick a different colour, and I could actually pick up probably any of the colours that are in my creation. I'm not done yet. Don't worry. All right, so this is how it's looking right now, okay? I can stamp on here for my greeting or I could put something over the top. So I don't have to have this part left white if I don't want to. We'll see. All right, I'm going to come in now with some trees and I'm going to do my trees in Mossy Meadow. Mossy Meadow is a really, really good colour with this technique. So I'm thinking where do we want our trees to be? Well, let's look at our inspiration picture and see where they were in real life or when they did this picture. So they've got some right here on the edge, okay, and then some down here in the valley kind of, and then a couple more over this side. So I've got three here, which are slightly bigger, and then five little ones. All right, so maybe the five little ones will go down in the valley, down in here. I'm going to make sure I get those inked up really, really well. And let's pop them right here. Giving them a really good kind of a, it looks good. They look good, don't they? I like that. That's great. Right, and then I'm going to have some over here on the right-hand side. Now, we could, if we wanted to do a house, we could put the house on or we could actually do a house on a separate piece and stick it on over the top. That would also work. So I'm going to have these ones just here making sure that they are inked up really well and transfer the ink by holding a little longer than I might normally. All right, so that looks good. Oh, 
it does look more like a moon doesn't it that's rather nice i like the i like that all right and then i might go and grab maybe maybe a couple of the little ones further over now here's the thing you know that this we know that this mountain back here is further away than the one here in the front okay so really the trees should be smaller so what you can do first of all choose smaller trees okay but there's a couple of other things you can do all right so i'm going to first of all stamp i'd like these to go kind of off i don't want them all on there so i'm going to have these right up over here just like that all right but if i wanted any others that look like they're further away what i can do is i can mask off and grab any old piece of paper and we can mask off this mountain here and we could have a few trees just over the edge of the hill there see how we've got a few trees appearing on the other side of the hill just by masking it off and so that's a really cool way of sort of creating um like distance it looks like they're further away does that make sense they look rather good with the mossy meadow don't they um all right so i'm thinking we're getting close to me thinking this is done it's so quick it comes together so quickly that um, we may get time to do more than one let's see um so i'm just going to really quickly go over these trees and if you're thinking well why you don't have to do this but i just find they get a little bit more solid and also it can brighten up the color of them because when you add water to mossy meadow it goes quite a bright green so i like that and it also makes them like if you can see any of the line of the mountain through them it kind of gets rid of that so we're going to make them more solid so i'm just going to run over them with my brush and as you can see we kind of just played with this kind of added different things you know what we thought what colors we wanted to use and i made it up as i went along kind of thing i'm still not completely happy with this sky so i'm gonna add a bit more flirty flamingo over the corner here come in from the outside and work my way in All right, so we we now have a sunset that looks it looks to me like a sunset. Does it look like a sunset to you? And we have room here to stamp a greeting, and I think I will do that. Oh, that's okay. You can eat dinner. That's completely fine, Jody. The paper you use for watercoloring makes all the difference. Absolutely right. Uh, watercolor paper. This is a great watercolor paper, and I've been using watercolor papers for years and years. And it's as good as any I've found. They're really, it's really very good. The only thing is it only comes in white. I do wish, maybe I should add it to the suggestion box for Stampin' Up. I wish we had it in other colours. Because when I was at art school, we did um, we did watercolouring usually with grey watercolour paper. So we're kind of starting with a medium tone. And yeah, then you added white and other things to lighten it up. So it's kind of interesting. But we do, we just have the white. And it does mean that you can do some fantastic designs so i've got some nice little long greetings that would look quite nice here we've got wishing you peace you're in my thoughts and i just can't thank you enough and just a simple hello what do you guys think i think something long and thin would be good i like wishing you peace that would kind of work this looks peaceful does that look peaceful to you kind of does <laughs> Uh, exactly flirty flamingo i would describe as a bit of a dirty pink not as much as blushing bride i always thought that was a really dirty pink but blushing bride has now retired but i didn't call it dirty pink because that doesn't sound very nice i called it pink with personality that's what i called it all right who is the first person who commented on which greeting to use leslie said thoughts and then donna said you're in my thoughts so i guess that's the one we're doing you're in my thoughts uh is this the one no wishing you peace i picked up the wrong one it's this one i think uh that one there you're in my thoughts so i'm going to grab just one of these little block g's because that'll fit quite nicely on that and i'll use night of navy because it's my darkest darkest color here darkest and i'm going to pop that and i'm actually going to stand up to do this because when i when i need to get something straight i finally get a better result if i stand up so that's a nice little tip for you if you make sure my paper is straight and we're just going to pop that right there you're in my thoughts just like that 
Isn't that nice? That's really pretty. Now the question is, do I just put it onto a white card base? or which is what I'd be tempted to do. And do I need a mat around it? I don't have to have a mat, but a mat could be nice. So this is what it would look like if I put it straight on. I do like this. It turned out really nice. And do you see how by um, bringing the colour down a little bit with my brushes down the bottom here, it kind of made it look like it fades into it rather than being um, like a ending where the stamp ends so I kind of really like that I think that looks really good oh black there's a thought Cherie didn't uh, didn't think of that do you mean a black mat or do you mean a black card base mat it okay all right you always stand up as you're vertically are you only are you only four nine Nairi I wouldn't have thought that from all the pictures I've seen you in pictures and I never thought mm, she's short <laughs> oh you like that no problems. All right. So this is something I probably could have done for a technique video and maybe I will still do it as a technique video because, like I said, every time you do it, you use different colours and you might change the orientation and it'll turn out every single time. Okay. So um, let me um, – black mat or maybe navy because I've got the navy here. Let's have a look at both and we'll see which one looks best. So here's a black mat. This is what it would look like on black. So black does work, but there isn't any black anywhere in our picture. So even though it looks good, that's what it would look like with the black. And then with navy, this is what it would look like with navy. Or I could just put it on, of course, without a mat at all. It doesn't actually have to have a mat. But everyone's saying that a mat would be nice. Oh, bye, Nicole. <laughs> the black does pop, but I think the navy does too. Ah, that's true. You, you are correct. It is a tone, not a colour. All right, so it seems that people, more people are saying black, although some people did say navy as well. I think both look good, but... Singers, I think we had, was which was first? Let's go back and see which one was first. Um, oh, Cherie said, uh, Judy said no mat. Sorry, Judy. And Patricia asked for a black mat. Black, no mat, said Moira. Just white, says Chris. <laughs> we have some lots of comments. All right. But I'm going to give in to the masses and I'm going to do a black mat. Now, I only want a little tiny mat. I don't want a lot of mat. Okay, so this is three by seven. Sorry, no, it isn't. It's three and a half by, uh, by five because that was – so I can measure this so it's slightly – so I could go up by quarter of an inch and do um, – three and but that's going to make quite a big mat so i'm only going to do a little bit i'm going to do an eighth of an inch bigger all right so i just want it to be tiny and then five is the other way so five and one eighth so let's try that and that way it's only a little mat and i think that's better than a wider mat on this because i don't think it needs a lot um, we can use whatever glue happens to suit you. Um, I've got Tombow here, so that's what I'll use. And we'll whack that all the way around here. Don't go too close to the edge with your Tombow because it's going to squeeze over a little bit. So you keep it a little bit away from the edge. And let's pop that on there. So, yes, I probably will do this um, like something similar to this for a technique class on a Tuesday sometime. But I just wanted to use this stamp set tonight because it, I haven't used it nearly as uh, nearly enough. And you guys, um, I know a few people have said, you know, when are you going to show us the Hills of Tuscany set? So, yeah, tonight's the night. <laughs> All right, let me see. I've got some dimensionals here. One of the good things about cleaning up is that you find things, right, that you haven't seen for a while. I just thought I could have used my black dimensionals. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Um, 
and I was I had misplaced a set of AirPods. I have two, a set that my husband gave me as a gift and then a set that Stampin' Up! gave me and um, I have alternate between the two. And when you go on a, a like especially on a long-haul flight, it's great to have two sets because if one, the batteries go on one, you've got the backup, you know, <laughs> so it's really handy um, for a trip. And um, I found I found my AirPods, the ones I've, I think I've missed them for about six months, maybe even longer. And I found them in a bag when I cleaned out the bag. Um, it's the pocket of the bag that I haven't used in a really long time. Okay, I'm going to call that done. Does it need bling? What do you guys think? Is bling, because this is the sort of thing that you want to show off the, you want the, you know, you want the artwork to show. So do we want to? <laughs> Oh, hello, Kelly. Nice to see you. Got lots of people here tonight. All right. No bling. Okay. No bling, no bling. All right. Looks like no bling is the thing. Um, I don't know what Jody thinks. Jody, what do you think? Oh, Jody's saying she thinks we should have birds. <laughs> but everyone's saying no bling. So I think I'm going to leave it just like this. And I do like it. It turned out really pretty. What do you think? Do we like it? Does it look like? A sunset and how did we go compared to our reference photo it's different isn't it totally different thing but you can kind of see the colors that I used to try and to try and get that same sort of similar kind of a effect <laughs> way off I know right oh better wow I'm impressed <laughs> Ah, yes. Um, Jean popped up recently. She purchased one of my tutorials. I haven't seen her on a video, though, for a really long time, and I've been wondering how she is as well. I did reach out to her, but um, she I don't know whether she was unwell or what happened, but um, she didn't she didn't respond, but she, like I said, she did recently purchase a tutorial. So, um, so yeah. Oh, you like this one better? Yay, that makes me happy. <laughs> So there you go. All right. So they both turned out good. And here's something interesting. We didn't add any purple, but there's definitely some purple down here. Can you see that? There's a little bit of a purpley tone where the misty moonlight um, and the night of navy has kind of come together and made a bit of a, a purple tone. So it's really interesting all the colors you can end up with, even if you don't use those colors. And I think I didn't mean to go over this um, top of this hill with the pink, but I kind of like that it's almost like you've got a little bit of um, pink. I don't know it's not reflection because it's, but you know, it's it's looking like it kind of it kind of goes with that as well. So I'm very happy. All right, okay, so we're done with that one. Now I'm going to set up and do one more thing tonight. How are we doing for time? Eight twenty-five. This will need to be quick, guys. Um, and I understand my husband is going out to pick up my son because he's at a friend's house um, for a party. So he's just about to walk out the door, I think. All right. So I thought I would use the Flight Nary paper because I know how much everyone keeps telling me that's the set they like the most in our celebration offering. And if you haven't seen it, this is it. I did play around with it a little bit the other night super super nice i love this one i thought i'd use this one tonight because i haven't used it very much and it's got this beautiful blue on the other side isn't this gorgeous love this paper and um one of my i think was it friday night we were talking about um all the birdies yes because we made the card with the hexagon punch on friday night and so i am going to use it again tonight be just because i want to use a different piece of the paper i did look at this one too because i haven't used this one very much actually these ones the birds the birds on branches ones this one this one and this one these three i haven't used them very much and i like them i really like all of them i think they're really really pretty dislike goodness me what are we disliking <laughs> I'm just looking. What did I go through? Cherie dislikes why scrapbooking layouts are 12 by 12. Um, it's just, I guess, traditional because if you're working with six by four photographs, okay, um, and you want to have more than one photograph on a page, you need a fair amount of space to work with because um, otherwise it's just going to be all too cramped up, okay? Um, so what happened? What happened? 
Oh, bye, Nairi. So I am looking back. What was, what was the, um, <laughs> what did, what happened? Did I, did I say something wrong? I don't know what happened there, but anyway, not a paper you'd use. This one, you don't like this one? Is that what you're saying, Leslie? Ha. Huh. Yucky, I will use it up to get rid of it. Goodness me, what are we doing? Oh, Jody doesn't like the bird paper. Oh, really? I'm so sorry, Jody. I'm so sorry. All right. Well, I'll make it quick then. How about that? And I'll I'll make a really fast little project with it and we'll see what we can do. All right. So I'm thinking I might go with this one. I rather like this one. And so what is it you don't like about it, Jody? What is it you don't like? I'm just going to go really simple. I'm just going to cut this down. Let me see. Actually, you know what? I'm going to cut this at 13.8. And this piece here is going to be six and a half. And you guys are going to recognize, recognize this, um, this particular layout. I use it quite a bit for quick and easy cards. And it always looks good. Now, this one here, this piece has got lots of room. And I think this is really nice because it's going to pull in these colours because there's Lost Lagoon in these flowers. So I'm going to pop that this way and I'm going to make it just on two and a half centimetres or an inch if you prefer the old scale. And that's going to be 13.8 as well. And I think the colour paper I want to have underneath will be Lost Lagoon. I think. See, these two look rather nice together, don't they? So is it too busy, Jody? Is that what it is? All right, so I'm thinking this will look nice on here like so. Turn it over. This one and this one. Yep. So I'm going to go, this will be 10 centimetres wide. And it's going to be 14.3 long. It already is. So that's great. All right. So let's get these down and make a nice quick card with this. Now I am going to go back to my favorite, favorite thing. You guys know what it is on this card. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because this is a really soft effect, right? I don't want, I want this to be a really soft card. So it needs a soft touch. And you know what that means, right? <laughs> too busy is that what it is over the top busy flip to b side okay well this is a b i think that's really nice yep you're right girls joan and moira and donna and marilyn have all said what it's going to be but I might not do a circle, although a circle is also good if you're trying to get a soft effect, okay? I'm thinking maybe a square. What do you think? How would a square go? So I've got my good old stylish shapes dies, which are my absolute favourite. These are always at the front of my die box because they're the ones that I love the most and the ones I use the most, although I've got a couple of the Thoughtful Expressions is giving them a run for their money at the moment. So this one would be a good size for a greeting right about here. And then this one would be a good size for my vellum right about there. Oh, no, that's no good. I wonder what's going on. Why is it lagging? Interesting. Put vellum over entire birds. <laughs> well, I could do that. But I'm not going to on this card, but we might do that another time. And you know what, that vellum, that's what you're saying is actually very, very true, that if you um, find that any paper is too you know, garish or too busy or too strong, putting a sheet of vellum over it is a really great way to treat that so that you um, it softens the whole effect and it makes it much, much better. All right, so... 
I'm going to bring in my machine, my cut and gloss. Here it comes. And I'm going to pop my piece of vellum that I have right here. I'm going to cut my largest square with the vellum. I'm going to run that through. Let me. I'm, whoop, I'm making you all seasick. Sorry about that. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit because it's a bit dark, isn't it? Oh. That through and roll it. Got a bit of a mark on that, but it's a bit of adhesive. I'll get rid of that in a second. And then the smaller one for a piece of just a piece of white. And I'm wondering what would be a good greeting to put on this. Something square would be good. I might use my um, Hooray for Surprises. has some really nice greetings in it that are a decent, like a squarish shape or would fit well on a square. So let me have a little play with those. I've been using this Hooray for Surprises set a lot. So this sending you lots of love is going to work really well or you're the best is going to work really well. So they will fit nicely. Hooray, can't wait to see you. <laughs> that one's probably a little big. But make a wish you're the best or sending you lots of love will all fit on really nicely. And I'm thinking because we've got um, Lost Lagoon in here, I'm thinking that might be a good colour ink to use. So let's grab that. Oops, we're still too far away now. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. <laughs> That's completely fine. You guys can say if you don't like something, I do not mind. I just realized we never used this little stamp on the last card. Didn't use it. Oh, well. Um, let me see. <laughs> oh, this, you guys are terrible, Cherie. Goodness me, would you like me to use a different colour? Would you like me to use something else from this? Perhaps. I'm going to go with sending you lots of love because I think that's really nice. Yes, Pretty Peacock and Lost Lagoon are favourites of mine. So, yes, I do use them a lot. Let me put this on as straight as I can. <laughs> Oh, look, everyone has a different thing they do or don't like, right? And that's okay. Right, so I'm now going to use this. And the vellum in this case will have the soft, the effect of softening this, this project, this card. I am going to use my eraser, though, to get rid of this little bit of glue that's got stuck here on my vellum. All right, so I'm going to turn this over and add a couple of dimensionals behind here. Okay, so as I'm starting to get to finishing up here on Tuesday, um, I have my Technique Tuesday video and you'll have to come along at 2 o'clock on Tuesday to see what the technique is going to be this week. Um, it'll be something fun, always is. And I've really found that those videos are getting a lot of traction. People seem to love techniques, so that's really good. All right, so this is going to go right here like so. Right, and I'm going to, I'm not going to put this on dimensionals again. You could, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to add some Tombow behind there. And I'm going to pop this right here so it's lined up with the side there of my card. Right, definitely need bling this time, definitely. So the question is, what bling will we use? We could use pearls. Pearls would work, and I could go silver festive pearls. Oh, what else did we have? Oh, we also have um, there is garden green in here as well, and I could add garden green pearls. Seeing as Cherie probably would prefer I don't use pretty peacock, <laughs> maybe. Oh no, Donna doesn't want me to use Lost Lagoon either. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. 
I know. It's such a beautiful colour, isn't it, Cherie? It, it is a really great colour. Bird bling. <laughs> you and your birds. All right, let me see. Have I got some birds? That'll be the next question. I do have some somewhere, but where could they be? That will be the next question. And if I can't find them, I can add them later. Or we could add, we could do something else right now instead. So I'm looking, looking, looking in my, my bling box. There's a lot of things coming up, you guys, over the next couple of weeks. So there's the festive pearls if I go with those. So these these ones here are both really, really great ideas for pulling on a card. But I'm looking for the birds that Jody wants. <laughs> you don't like the birds because it's too busy, but we do like the bird bling. Is that right? I tell you what, sometimes I have resigned myself to the fact that I will never be able to keep everybody happy as rhinestones because you just can't. Not everyone is going to be happy no matter what you do and that's okay. I've also got, um, I've also got, these are really pretty. I've got, um, the gold pastel gems and I've got a few of the um, the balmy blue ones too which would also look nice with this because of the blue in here so those are nice lots of options you guys oh look look Cherie I've got pretty peacock bling look at that that would also look good these ones are really nice these are new these are called petal pink and pretty peacock foiled gems and they've got like can you see them they've got like gold sparkles in them really really pretty so that's another option. So many options. <laughs> yeah, you're here to make that point. Exactly right, Cherie. <laughs> I'm so, so glad, Jodie. I'm really glad that you guys keep coming back. So I must be doing something right. <laughs> yep, my favourite colours too. Teals, aquas and turquoises. See, on you, we could be friends. <laughs> Don is happy. All right, so did we end up with a final? I can't find the birdies. I can't find them, Jody. They're not in the box where they should be. So would you like me to add them later or just to add something else? What do we think? I'm missing comments down the bottom. <laughs> I have to prove myself first. Oh, my goodness. You're hard work. <laughs> Butterflies. Uh, no, I don't have any of those left. I don't think. I know. I know it's a great bunch of ladies here, Donna. Every Friday and Sunday night, I, I look forward to them too. Don't you worry. Okay. All right. So these are the ones you're, you're talking about now, Cherie. Yes, the pretty peacock gems. All right, let's do it. Um, I will use my scissors. And we go. And I'm going to use a big one. I'm going to have one down here. And I'm going to have a couple of little guys. So one up here. These ones match that beautiful specialty paper, which I also have. Oh, I haven't used that paper yet, but you guys might not want me to because it's <laughs> it's uh, got pretty peacock in it. Um, super super nice though. It's a specialty paper. Have you guys seen it? It's in um. Actually, I don't want that there. Don't like it. I'll move it out of here. I could add a little ribbon to this as well. Ribbon would also be nice, but I'm not going to. Uh, or twine. Um, so the the paper that I'm talking about is, oh, I've forgotten the name of it. It's a specialty paper and it's gold and pretty peacock and I think petal pink. So it matches, it matches these gems, the ones that we just had out. Where are they? It matches these. Um, da, 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 uh, nearly there I think yeah yeah it's called forever love it's this paper here so you've got moody mauve uh, petal pink and pretty peacock and gold really 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 beautiful absolutely gorgeous um, and it's got vanilla as well super super nice and that's what those gems are the match up to I do have this paper 
it's gorgeous you have some of that me too yep I like talking about the things we do like not so much about the things we don't <laughs> yeah they're gorgeous but that's that's a lovely set I do have this ribbon too the ribbon is gorgeous I could use I could have used the pretty peacock ribbon on here but that's probably maybe that would have been over the top so I need to put this on a base I have one already folded and ready to go so let's pop that well I've got a couple of marks there on that that's all right let's pop this on with some Tombow and then we get to call this a finished card not everyone's going to like everything that is absolutely the truth twine would work okay on this card I agree oh guess what that's interesting that's not this is too small that's not the right size that's interesting I must have cut it wrong Some basic white thick cardstock. That's what this is. Trumpet and Merlot were both in here when I started, but they're no longer. They've both moved out. should be right this time that's better there we go oh very very welcome you guys love you all too i hope that you all had a really fun night we did two cards and they turned, turned out totally different goodness me could they be more different these two cards <laughs> so this is the first card if you missed this one you might want to go back and watch that just watch the replay um, and then we finished up with this one which is just a quick easy little card that we just threw some paper and a sentiment on and a bit of vellum and called it a card so there you go <laughs> maybe they did actually that's quite possibly they did go sticky beak uh, they do that they're very very curious little creatures especially the orange one he has got to know what everything what everyone's doing and what it's all about you know he walks us to the door he's there to greet us when we come home he's yeah all right you guys well i had a fun night i hope you did too um i will be live again on tuesday if you watch tonight and you love these videos don't forget to press the subscribe button because that's how i get seen by more and more and more people and we are coming up really close i'm getting very close to 10,000 subscribers so i'm pretty excited about that i think i'm at 9.72 right now and i'm excited to get those last last couple of hundred last few hundred so i can um so i can actually hit that 10,000 mark so there you go Thank you. I'm glad you liked it, Judy. I like this. Oh, this is my favourite too. This one was just, just a quick and easy card, but this one is the one that is, uh, I mean, it wasn't difficult, but this is the one that, for me, this is like more of a unique thing tonight. All right. Yep. See you in the morning, Margaret. So if, if you're in the team, those of you who are team members, um, I will be live with you guys tomorrow morning. Um, and we are going to talk uh, team challenges, I think, tomorrow. Okay. Have a great night, you guys, and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.